Good morning, Don. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? Well, I, I'm doing a lot better than what you are with that snowstorm. We're down here in the Carolinas. It's uh, a little chilly, but it's it's there's no snow. It's murder here, man. I was saying earlier, I was just drying my socks with the hair dryer from the, uh, <laughs> the hotel bathroom. So the glamorous life of an author on tour, you know? <laughs> yeah, but Don, you know, somehow, some way that's going to end up in a book because I always no, believe that authors, you know, have to experience <laughs> life first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I could experience life on Miami Beach, too, you know. <laughs> Putting this book Nothing together, will... City in yeah. Ruins, I mean, my God, I mean, this, this is this is really, the thing is that it's the final volume in a saga. There's going to be a lot of readers that are going to go, oh, but the thing I love about you is that you always start something brand new for us. Well, you know, I hate to disappoint you, but, you know, I'm retiring after this No, book. Don. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. No, no. True, 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 true. You know, look, man, you, you know, I, I think you. this book, this trilogy took me 30 years to write. Yes. 28, but it was 30 years ago when I started it. Um, and, you know, I did other things in the meantime. You know, I wrote 20 something other books, but uh, it feels like an ending. Wow. You know, it feels like my life's work and, and I'm I'm sort of getting a little bit more involved in, in political things than I was. And I want to focus on that at, at least through November. I think that that you need to know when to graciously exit the stage and and make room for for other people. Did you write this out in a journal to prepare yourself? Because I've been in radio for 44 years and I don't have the guts yeah. to tell that 14 year old kid still in me that you know, we got to go. <laughs> it was it was more of an evolution than a revolution. Wow. You know, uh, I was in the middle of writing this third book. It was it was during the pandemic, uh, which I think made a lot of us more reflective uh, not to, to be a downer here. My mom passed away during that period of time. Um, and uh, I just got thinking, you know, and I'm and my wife and I discussed it. And I, th I thought, you know what, babe, I I. I think this is it. I think this is the time to pull the pin. As a writer and an author, that is a voice. You said you want to get politically involved with things. Is that is it going to start with the writing first? Well, it has been. You know, I've I've been on social media pretty actively for about the past six years. Nice. My partner Shane Salerno and I make uh, videos that have had. And this shocks me. Over three hundred million views. Gee, wow. Right. 15 million with the last three videos alone. Um, and we've been told by candidates, you know, that we've that we've had a, a positive effect. So, you know, it's it's still writing. It's obviously it's a very different kind of writing. It's much more concise mm -hmm. uh, kind of writing. And we're trying to speak in plain and, and quite frankly, tough language. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll continue writing, you know, at least through November in, in, in those ways. I'm so glad to hear this. And the reason why is because a couple of months ago, I was with Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter, and she spoke about oh. we've got to get more voices activated in this in this community and this and this nation. And so to hear yeah. you speak like this, it just warms my heart. Well, thank you, man. Listen, I, I think that this is the most important election in this country, probably since 1860. Mm -hmm. I think either we're going to be a democracy or we're going to be some sort of tin pot dictatorship. Um, you know, the, the nominee of the Republican Party is a, a man who literally tried to overthrow the government of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's more than outrageous. And, and I don't want to get overtly political on your show. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I feel that that those of us who have a little bit of a platform need to be speaking out. Yeah, yeah. But to learn from it, because we have to be able to teach the future. And and that's what I've always loved about your writing, is that I would love to see the people that have been inspired to write themselves because of you. So it's always passing things forward, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the fun of it. And that that's also, you know, part of my decision to retire. I, I look down at the next sort of half generation, generation, I see really talented people. I see more and more women, more and more minorities. I think it's really exciting for the genre. And it's, listen, guys who are older than me were so kind to me when I was coming up. 
in terms of you know praising my work, giving me blurbs, being encouraging, and that's that's what we should be doing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to be looking at these books much differently now, and because I mean, it's it's one of those things where you know, I, I you got to take them off the shelf, and you've got to put them in like like some sort of a box or something that's going to say, no, this is my book from Don Winslow. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's my general belief that you never lend a book; they never come back. Right. <laughs> well, that's what that's what those little libraries are on in, in neighborhoods. Those things scare the hell right. out of me only because it's like, OK, yeah. nobody knows the, the journey that you took as the reader. And now you just gave it to somebody else that you don't even know. Right, right, right. But but, you know, I think the, it's a sweet idea, though, those little neighborhood libraries, isn't it? I, I always get kind of a kick out of it when I walk past one of those. It's, you know? it's always fun to go in there and look and see what everybody else is reading. And then you go, really? I wonder what neighbor put yeah. that one in there. Right, right. Some kind of racy, kind of semi sleazy <laughs> book, and you wonder wonder who it is. Yeah. So, with, with with your imagination and the way that you plan out your plots, what are you going to do with that energy? Because I mean, that's I mean, you're going to be laying awake at night putting things together. Arrow, I've laid awake at night my whole damn life. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't think that's going to change. You know, uh, when I was actively a writer, which is feels odd when I when I hear it coming out of my mouth um, you know I, I would start work at 5 30 in the morning and work yeah. till 5 30 now I try to sleep in and I can't do it right right yeah um, yeah yeah you know, I slept till 7 15 the other morning and my wife was like wow congratulations yeah that's great I, I will sit there and if I have a morning where I sleep to 7 45 I'll go wait a second your mother used to wake you up at 7 30 okay after all of these years you're only giving yourself 15 <laughs> more minutes of sleep dude <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we should add a minute a year. What do you think of that? I love that. You but know, the problem is build I, it up. I, I can't get my life back if I'm going to sleep it all away. Well, that's it, man. I, I don't like the sun to find me sleeping, you know, <laughs> and uh, I love those early morning hours, the quietude, watching the, the dawn, you know, watching the sky change, uh, making that first glorious pot of coffee. You know, that's all really good stuff. Oh, the, the scent of it. That, to me, is what inspires me to write every single morning. I've got to smell that coffee in the air. It's the best. You know, I used to roast my own. I went through this period where I knew this writer in Kona who would send me 10-pound bags of raw coffee beans, <laughs> and I'd actually roast them and then grind them and make a pot of coffee. It was insane, you know, and the scent was crazy. Yeah, you know. Although some mornings I'll get up and I'll go out and surf, and then come back and have that cup of coffee, and you know, it just feels like this great reward. Let's talk about that surfing because I was with a a person from um, from the Voice on NBC, and he also is a surfer. And I asked him, I said, "Where is your imagination when you're on that board?" And he couldn't answer that question. So now that you brought it up, I got to ask you because I really think that when you're on that board, your mind is somewhere else. Uh. Boy, I disagree. I think it better be on what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know about this guy. He must be a much better surfer than I am, which is not hard to do, by the way. But um, no, I am completely focused on on what the ocean's doing. Yeah, which is the great part about it because that's you know, I mean, it takes you out of your other world, yeah, right? Exactly, uh, and focuses you, uh, you know, on the ocean, and the ocean's going to do what it wants to do, which is the great thing about it. Whether you're in it or not, you become insignificant, which I think is a really good thing. Being on this tour with City in Ruins, what is it like for you personally as a creative mind? Because I mean, are are you telling people that this is it? Oh yeah, I announced really? this about a year ago. Yeah, it's been a little sad. I got to tell you, I was I was here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire last night um, with uh, with Joe Hill. And, you know, people were coming up to get the book signed afterwards and, you know, expressing, ah, it makes me a little sad, their strong feelings about my work. And, and they were thanking me and I was thanking them because, you know, every good thing I have in life, I owe to readers and booksellers. And uh, it's, it's been a little bittersweet. It's been mm-hmm. a little emotional. Yeah. yeah. And w- with you being so close to, to, to fans and, and new, new beginners, I mean, I mean, what are you going to do about your, your need for people? Are you going to get a grocery st- store job or something? <laughs> That's a thought, isn't it? You know, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I think what I might do is a uh, tutor. Ooh. Uh, I, I've thought of putting an ad because I live in two little towns at various parts of the year. And I'm thinking of putting an ad in the local paper or whatever the modern equivalent of that is. 
and and saying, you know, I'm going to be at a certain coffee house from two to four on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. Um, and if you want to talk about writing or, you know, you need help with your, you know, high school paper or whatever, uh, your new novel, come on by and, and we'll do that. Oh, my God. That's that's so beautiful. I did that with Barnes and Noble for two and a half years. And what I did would you really? Oh, yeah. my God. It was it was the most incredible journey because you meet other writers and other people who believe in the power of sharing stories. But the, the one lesson that a lot of people didn't like about me was I would say, oh, OK, so you want to write mystery. Grab a chair. Go sit in that row where the mystery books are and tell me what you mm-hmm. experience, because I want them to know that people aren't rushing to get over there every day. Right. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You know, <laughs> I remember I was at uh, I forget what bookstore it was. It was in California, and you know they put you out in front at a table yep. with you know your book and a nameplate, and people come by and look at you like it's a zoo, and they're trying not to make eye contact, you know, because they don't want you to pitch you know the book. And this elderly lady, I was sitting there about an hour and a half. Nobody came up, and finally this very sweet elderly lady comes up, and she looks at the name tag, looks at me, and says, "Are you Don Winslow?" And I said, "Yeah." She said, um, may I ask you a question? And I said, sure. She said, do you know where the ladies' room is? <laughs> <laughs> and I did, you know, so shared that with her. See, you got to write something for what, what it's like to go on the journey of a published author, because a lot of us think that, you know, you, you, they just show up in a bookstore. But you guys have got to PR your path real big time. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot that goes into it and a lot of work by a lot of other people you know, that plan that and carry it out a lot of energy and a lot of hard work. So I'm just sort of the tip of the spear. Yeah. Yeah. With a book like City in Ruins, would you say that your whole entire trilogy, would you say that you were true crime before it became cool? Hmm. Interesting question. Listen, I, I clearly write crime fiction, but it's very close to the bone. You know, I did three books about the Mexican drug cartels that are virtually documentaries. Everything in those books actually happened. So, yeah, perhaps so, you know, although my wife's like a big true crime person. She (laughs) loves she loves those and the home redesign shows. Yeah. So I want to combine them so that they do. You know, they go to rehab a house and they tear the drywall off and find a body. I think that would be great. I've always thought that you should be put on the stand in one of your books because you already know what's going to (laughs) happen. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a wonderful feeling of power. You know, I, everyone's going to do or say what I want them to do or I hit the delete key. If only the world were like that. What's the biggest shock that you that you found on, on your computer when you when you were writing? Only because, you know, because there's many times when I'm writing, I'm going, whoa, I don't even know where that one even came from. Yeah. Isn't that the, isn't that the truth? It's amazing. That's why I don't outline. You yeah, know, yeah. because I, I want to be open to those surprises. There have been a few of them. I mean, with these three books, there's a character, Madeline, uh, who's the, the protagonist's mother, Danny Ryan's mother, who I thought was going to be a minor character, but I ended up liking her so much. Um, and she started to say some kind of interesting original things that she became a much larger character in a, a book called The Cartel. I had a, a journalist, Pablo Moore, that I thought was going to be a minor character, but I, I kind of fell in love with him and he became a major character. So it's it's that kind of surprise. How do you yeah. convince yourself, though, to take that chance? Because, I mean, I always call them wine glass moments. I'll have a glass of wine and I'll oh. go, OK, go in there and, <laughs> and uh, you know, take the chance because you can always erase it. <laughs> it's probably more like the fourth cup of coffee yeah. <laughs> choice <laughs> with me. Uh, but uh, I listen, I, I've learned over the years because I'm not young, right? I've written, you know, 20 something books uh, that it's OK to take that chance because, look, no one's going to die. Right. It's not like we have a child on, on an operating table. Right. You know, we can make mistakes if, if we try it and it doesn't work. You know, all we have to do is hit delete or move things around. You know, and so there's nothing to be afraid of, really. You know, you just have to have the sense of, okay, I'm going to take this risk. And then you need the objectivity to look at it and say, well, it really worked or, oh, man, it really didn't work. And and then you start again. All right. Writer to writer, because I'm having to live with this myself these days. What happens to your writing when you transition? In other words, because that, that writing has got to go somewhere. It cannot go with you. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. I don't I'm, either. I'm not, I'm not being coy because uh, I don't feel retired yet, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because, you know, obviously I'm out here on tour and then, you know, I'm doing the political writing. 
Um, so I don't know the answer to that question. Listen, I love to read. I guess that that's probably an obvious statement. And 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 there's not enough time in the day to read enough books. I love to do research, and there's yes. some research I'm doing that I probably won't do anything with. It's just for my own satisfaction. Do a lot of research on Native American history, <gasps> African history. Um, and so uh, I, I think that, that it'll probably go there, but I, I don't know. Don, if you could see this studio, my I've got all Native American prayer tools in here. Oh my god. Right? Oh my I got the coup stick. I've got I've got tomahawks. I've got all things that were authentically made by by people of these great nations. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal for me, you know. I I used to teach on the Winnebago reservation. Uh, my wife and I are involved now in in building skateboard parks on oh. reservations because uh, for some reason and no one can seem to to articulate it skateboard parks have cut down drastically on the number of teenage suicides which is a shocking statistic mm -hmm. yeah. uh, on reservations so we're, we're pretty involved with this stuff wow that is so cool because it seems to be a lost story I've been with more elders that say they're trying to convince the younger generation to share the story of the family because once they're gone it, it's over nobody's going to know the story yeah, I think the, the younger kids, you know, are looking on the Internet. They're looking for different kinds of things. Um, and and it is, it's a real serious problem, you know, and, and the, the suicide rate is shocking. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's it's really a tragedy and it gets it gets no attention at all. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just saw an article about uh, uh, the northern uh, Indians in Montana. Uh, it, it's a drug capital of, of that area because I mean, they're, yep. they're, they're getting the drugs in there. And it's like, oh, my God, if we don't wake up and start helping people. Right. And there we went we right. went po political, didn't we? <laughs> Well, we did. Well, we did. But we also let's let's say that we went ethical. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I, I, I don't think in terms of right or left, th th there's anything to talk about about teenage suicides. You know, it's it's a human issue and we should treat it like human beings. Absolutely. Where can people go to find out more information about you? And I really want to tap into your stuff that you're doing on that video. Well, they can they can go on my Twitter feed, you know, Don Winslow, and and or on my my website, same thing, and and they'll see it all. I love it, or, dude. You know, Google me, you know. <laughs> 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 well, I can't thank you enough for everything that you have shared with with this generation and the many generations that will follow, sir. Well, that's very, very kind of you, man. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Please come back anytime. I mean, if you're going to get political, I talk about political things on this on this show. So let's let's listen. Let's spread the word. Let's let's get on. I'm happy to talk about it. Let's get on. Let's talk about Native American stuff. Let's talk yeah. about music or jazz or film or whatever. Anytime, man. I love talking with you. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today? Okay, sir. I'm going to try. You too. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.